Checking in with Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch for our weekly City Hall update on this uh, sloppy Groundhog Day. Mayor, how are you today? So far, so good, Joe. A little, uh, little wacky storm. Not that we couldn't handle in the end. Any problems reported around the city that you've heard? No, I, you know, I obviously talked to uh, Commissioner Grazioso and Superintendent Prenderville on a regular basis, and, you know, we were prepared for what the forecasters were saying, <laughs> of course. Uh, things change, so we, we sent the troops home at a certain point, and things change again, so we had to bring the troops back and do some scraping, and, and of course now it's it's just watching the temperatures um, fluctuate. It's it's interesting. I know we've talked about this, but you know in West Quincy you could have a couple of inches on this on the uh, roads up there, and in House Neck by the water you may have nothing. Um, these are types of storms where it variates because of the the temperatures are so close to the freezing mark. Um, so, you know, they're, uh, everything was scraped, so they'll watch it today to see when it drops again. It's supposed to drop later today with some snow showers, and I'm sure it'll be a salting operation at that point. Right. There was, I know, some concern about some minor flooding at high tide. Did, did, did you hear about anything about that overnight? Uh, there's you know, nothing that uh, was unusual or they couldn't handle. I know today they're out, you know, shoveling out some of those problem areas, uh, the storm drains, so we can get rid of some of this water before it freezes up but no nothing uh nothing too bad from the tides well that is great news interestingly though um up atop uh, uh great blue hill or just over in milton uh 14.3 inches of snow so it just goes to show you yeah i think that elevation is around 600 above sea level you know yeah. uh city hall for example is 44 feet above sea level <laughs> it shows you you know how quickly could you go up to the Hills of West Quincy, and then it peaks out at the Blue Hills. So that's yeah. a perfect example of what uh, guys deal with, you know. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it's a, too many different worlds. You'll be happy to know that uh, Punxsutawney Phil has predicted six more weeks of winter, so we're not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know uh, what the record of that groundhog is, but I've uh, never paid too much attention to it. <laughs> I think we all get a chuckle out of it and see what happens. <laughs> The good thing is we're now into February, right? So every day behind us is a is a good thing. Yeah, and I mean around here at this time of year, it's always a pretty good bet that it's definitely six more weeks of winter. <laughs> well, it's true, and you know, usually January is the coldest month. February is usually the snowiest month. So let's, uh, you know, you know, I know we've talked about it a million times, but going back a few years at fifteen when we had both the coldest month and the snowiest month, it was no fun. Yes. Uh, so let's hope it's, uh, you know, the, the, the additional burden right now on finances, I just hope it's not too crazy the next four or five weeks. Uh, yeah. So we can get through this without a lot of extra dough that we have to spend. Right. Yeah. I know. Um, well, the picture I know for the budget is probably pretty unclear right now uh, because uh, the revenue picture is, is unclear at the moment. Yeah. We've actually done a bunch of modeling. Uh, you know, my CFO, Eric Mason, and his team, they've asked them to do modeling for, for various possibilities. You know, you, there's always automatic increases in health insurance and retirement costs. And uh, we don't know yet what the local aid number will be. The governor has reached, you know, released some numbers, see what the House and Senate do. We don't know if if the federal government is going to come through with any of the, the big dollars that they have on the table right now to help cities in towns and states to help with their revenue shortfall. So there's a lot of balls up in the air on this. And, uh, you know, as you know, we don't go to the city council to the first meeting in May, but there's a lot of work that's done ahead of time in preparing for that. I know that there um, was a little uh, concern that the storm may interrupt the registration for vaccinations at the uh, 180 Old Colony Avenue. Will that still begin today, Mayor? Yes, they actually um, made some changes for the later afternoon ones yesterday. They tried to move them up early yesterday. Uh, but again, the storm didn't, didn't come to fruition from what they were right. certainly predicting. So, um, you know, I think everyone was thinking to do the right thing. You know, we had an early release day for schools yesterday. Mm -hmm. They talked to the superintendent about 530 in the morning and the night before, you know. Yep. So I, I kiddingly called them last night and said, hey, great job on the early release. Four kids didn't get wet, <laughs> you know, but you, you're going to make those decisions early based on, you know, the information at hand. And yeah. and when uh, things get messed up on the predictions, then we look a little foolish on the decisions, but that's just the way it is, right? Right. So safety first, and that's why those decisions are made. Sure. Yeah. 
So, but can we talk a little bit about the uh, the clinic uh, that Manor Community Health Center will be running um, at 180 Old Colony Avenue? How's that going to work? Sure. Of course, Murphy's Law, you know, this this weekend was was bitter cold. And sure enough, the boilers went down at that location. Oh, gosh. So our our team from public buildings went in and really worked the tails off. And, you know, the building is going to be completely gutted and renovated into a special needs learning center. So we don't want to spend a lot of money in there, but we had to spend some money to get the heat back up and running. And the guys did a massive job. Uh, We got some great talent in-house, and they got that rolling again. Um, And, of course, um, you know, our office works with Smanit, so we handle logistics and the tables and the chairs and the petitions and and the uh, you know the parking and the signage and and then of course man it's handling the medical side of it with the actual vas- vaccinations and and their portal is handling the the appointments although we have a bunch of call takers that were operating out of the emergency operating center under Ali Sleeman our director of emergency management so working very ha- close hand in hand with with uh, Cynthia and the team at Manit uh, they've been a great great partner throughout this whole project. Um, uh, challenges. As I said a number of times, I know I'm probably repeating myself, but it bears repeating. They've just been an incredible partner on this, and so it's 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 good. Every every day, every week, we vaccinate that many more in our particular elderly elderly population and those susceptible to uh, issues because of underlying conditions. Uh, it's a matter of it just getting the vaccines. Uh, we'll pump them out as quick as we get them. So you know, it's been a little slow from the federal government to the states. Uh, or regions, and, uh, and then, of course, the cities and towns. But um, things are starting to move. So, I, you know, we talked about winter. We talked a little about Groundhog Day. I ho- certainly hope, but, you know, middle of April, we'll all be, you know, looking back at this thing, and most people will be vaccinated, and we can look forward to the weather changing and new beginnings, you know. So we'll see what happens. But we're well underway. There's also some other um, um, types of vaccination operations we're working on. Uh, with MassCon and some other entities, Brewster, Professional Fighter Fighters of Massachusetts. I've uh, been working on a, a mobile plan as well. So we could go, for example, perhaps to one of our senior complexes, right to the complex with a team of nurses and EMTs and paramedics and, and a vaccinated number of people right in their facility. So a lot of work being done logistically right now to try to get as many of these out as we can. The problem, and as you know, is the challenge, as you know, is the amount of vaccinations is not available. Uh, it's not a matter of getting them in people's arms. It's a matter of physically getting them in hand. Right. I know um, Beth Israel is hoping to open up a clinic up at State Street South uh, sometime soon as well. So it's- Yeah, they've been another good partner, and, and they've done a lot of testing on their site, in the new site in Quincy. Uh, Rich Fernandez and his team from BI Milton, I should say BI Lane. Right. Yeah. Now that's a new, a new uh, partnership there. Both uh, BI and Leahy, tremendous organizations. So having them with their facility in Quincy, and then of course Hospital Milton, they're doing great work. And of course South Cove is doing their thing. You got urgent care facilities around the city as well, uh, doing their thing. And of course you got the pharmacy. So in some cases, some of our seniors have got the vaccinations directly from a pharmacy or through their primary physician. So there's so many different outlets. I know people were frustrated with the state system last week, and understandably so. Uh, but there are other outlets, not just that main state line that they that they had opened up. Um, this stuff isn't easy, you know. It's some people think you can just snap the finger and you know make you know wave the magic wand, but uh, there's a lot of logistic issues, uh, logistical issues, I should say, in getting this done. And the main challenge is getting the actual vaccinations in hand. Um, so a lot of work being done by a lot of organizations, a lot of people, and and I know that the governor has taken a bit of a beating. Uh, which I don't really think is fair. I think he's been tremendous from the start of this uh, great leader working his tail off with his team to try to get it done as well. So uh, a little more patience. Right? And I understand people are, have had it, you know, this has been going on since last March. Uh, but keep in mind, they still, uh, they broke all kinds of records in getting to the vaccinations, that uh, vaccinations. And as much as I know people do not like, or did not like Donald Trump uh, I mean, the decisions made at the federal level, pouring billions into that process, changing the FDA process, allowed for that to happen much sooner. So, so we're just almost around, you know, around the corner here. We should uh, just be a little more patient. We're almost there. And then, of course, as I said, the weather hopefully will be changing, and and uh, 
it'll be a good pickup for, for people's moods and dispositions as we go forward. Will um, Manit still be running the testing clinic in addition to the vaccination clinic? That's correct, yes. Okay. Um, and the uh, phone number for uh, folks to call to schedule an appointment there is 617-376-1470. Uh, or for Chinese language assistance, 617-376-1298. And I know uh, through the city website as well, uh, QuincyMA.com. And those, those are purely to book uh, an appointment for the vaccination. That has nothing to do with the testing. Okay. Keep that in mind, those phone numbers. Okay. And that's just at that 180 All Colony Avenue site. And I, it is, unless they tell you, man, it when they call back, unless they tell you, they may assign some of them to the West Corner Street location, but... Once the appointment is booked, that's when they'll, they'll let them know. But, yes, most of it's being done at 180 Old Colony. Okay, very good. Any um, word on new health commissioner for the city yet, Mayor? No, we're, uh, I interviewed somebody last week, and, uh, and I expect to do a couple of more interviews over the next couple of weeks. So, we're, I mean, it's a difficult time, right? So people that are in that world um, are in the middle of this and they, you know, don't necessarily want to leave where they are while in the middle of this. So it's, a, it's a little challenging getting connected with, uh, uh, with, you know, on the timing of, of, of all this. So my guess is we're going to, we're going to find somebody that they probably won't be able to start with us for a couple of months out because they don't want to leave their agencies hanging because of what we're in the middle of. So, yeah. uh, we'll get there. Uh, we have a great team at the health department, a lot of great professionals and, and certainly our two uh, nurses, uh, Kate, Caitlin and uh, Taylor, are doing great, great work. So, um, you know, we'll get through this, and we get some uh, help from City Hall on some of the administration part of it. And, of course, there's a lot of other issues the health department deal with, not just the health issue of pandemic, but, you know, they deal every day with the rodent issue, with housing code inspections, with restaurant inspections, and safe and health uh, codes of all types. So, um, operation is, is continuing on and it's been, it's been flawless. So, uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Um, have you scheduled the uh, joint meeting yet to fill the school committee seat, Mayor? Actually, I met late yesterday with the council president, uh, Nina Liang, mm -hmm. and, uh, we circled a date and she was polling her members and I have the superintendent polling the members of the school committee this week. Okay. So we'll, you know, we'll see what the schedules allow. Um, hopefully we'll get everyone together because there's not a lot of nighttime activity going on in the world right now. Uh, but, you know, for example, we were looking originally at next Tuesday night, but there's a Board of Appeals meeting, and some of the wood councillors get tied up with the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. So yeah. we're looking at the following week, which is school vacation week, one of the nights in that week. So uh, hopefully by the end of today or tomorrow, we'll have that booked and get the notice out. Okay, very good. <clears throat> Anything else we should let folks know about right now? Um, no, I, th I, you know, I appreciate the support of the community. We appreciate all the community partners that of all we're going through. And just to remind people that we're, you know, we're yeah, getting there, uh, a little bit more patience. And I understand why people are impatient at this point. Um, I have my days too, so, uh, I get it. It's been, it's been a long haul, it's been tough for people being stuck in the house and the cabin fever or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's been very difficult, but we're almost there. You know, we really are. So just hang in there. Make sure you call the numbers uh, that you just gave out. And, of course, my office is always available on any constituent uh, constituent issue at 617-376-1990. Appreciate your time, Mayor, and uh, stay dry. You also. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye now.